Right guys, so this is session week three, session two. Uh, we're doing deadlift day today. You've not actually seen me do a deadlift day yet, so this will be a little different to the last two videos. So just starting with a little bit of a backwards walk, uh, some hips and knees, 10 minute backwards walk. Then we're actually gonna go over, and we've been lent some kit off uh, Kaiser Fitness, um, which is air resistance machines, and they're uh, pretty unique, so they, they change the actual strength curve. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a hamstring curl uh, to start, and we'll do eccentric overloads. And what you can do with these machines is actually increase the resistance whilst you're going through the movement. But also, uh, on a hamstring curl, as you're curling and that heel gets close to your bum, um, obviously you're accelerating the load, so it actually gets less resistance at that bottom end range of motion. Whereas with the Kaiser machines, it's gonna be equal throughout the whole range. So you can accelerate into the movement uh, with full force and not have to worry about you know the plate stack flying around so we're going to jump in on the ham curl and do a couple of sets of eccentric uh, hamstring curls uh, just before we jump into the actual deadlift session um, then we got some sandbag work and then uh, some assistance some reverse hyper and some other bits so i'll finish this backwards walk we'll get cracking on the ham curls so on these machines you've got resistance down resistance up here so you can control them while you're lifting. On the screen here we've got resistance and it counts your reps as well in case you're a spanner like me and can't count your reps. So I'm just going to do one curl, up the resistance real high and then do like a 10 second negative is kind of the goal. So I'm just going to do three sets of three. Uh, on this. <laughs> oh. Gets heavy uh, pretty fast. <laughs> uh. 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 Oh. So yeah, that's a pretty uh, it's a really unique feeling, completely different to a, a weight stack and obviously you can't really do eccentric overload work on like a hamstring curl. I guess if you had a training partner to push it up for you or something you could, but to be able to have such control over it, it's real handy so looking forward to seeing what benefits I can get uh, out of my deadlift when I can overload my hamstrings eccentric. It's obviously if anyone's followed me for a while you'll know I've got a bit of history of uh, tearing hamstrings here and there. So hopefully stuff like this can help uh, keep my hamstrings nice and strong and healthy so that we can push the deadlift uh, you know, close to that 400 kilo mark is kind of where I want to, well that's where I should be at to be honest. I pulled 370 about five years ago so you know I should be fucking at 400 by now. So we're going to see if we can have one mad push for it and hopefully this is going to be a big player in getting there. So you missed a few warm ups, we ran out of battery so I tried to run home and get a battery but uh, today I'm going to pull 260 for one and then we're going to go and drop down uh, right about 200, 220, depends how the 260 moves and do some sets of five. Um, so the, the reason for me doing the single is just because I've been, the last two weeks I've been really light drilling my position and I just need to know kind of how it feels a little heavier uh, because they changed the competition uh, from deadlift for reps to max deadlift so I'm going to have to go a bit heavier than I planned. I was kind of planning to build a little volume and just do the 250 for reps, uh, but I'm going to have to uh, build to a max. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pull 260, fingers crossed it's pretty fucking easy, no hype, no bullshit, just get in there and just sling in some good tin. It's all right. I reckon in the competition, should be good for about 320. I reckon I can pull 300 now, so um, yeah, I've got a couple of weeks, so if we can chip away another 20 kilo, should be about right. So we're gonna drop down now. I'll do 220, because that felt okay. And we'll hit a couple of sets of five before we get to sandbags. So one thing worth noting on your deadlifts, guys, is they're obviously pretty well known to be 
fatiguing neurologically. So, you know, it's the, the exercise you're lifting the most load with, and you know, people will tell you that it carries the most fatigue, which is kind of true. But if you control your nervous system, so you don't get hyped, you don't get ramped up, you don't get that adrenaline dump. It's not as fatiguing as you think, so always remember that. You don't need to get hyped, smelling salts, fucking slapping every single session. I think people think, because I'm a bit of a fucking wild one when I go off on one in the gym, people think I'm like that all the time, but you can't do that because it's just going to keep stacking up things you need to recover from neurologically, which is a little bit different to physiological fatigue. So today, my reps and sets, everything, they're just chill. Uh, you know, I might put a little bit more effort in on the sandbag, but I'm just kind of going through the motions in my brain and executing everything perfectly. And then I'm not going to carry fatigue into other sessions. Now, when there's a time and a place for it, obviously I'll go fucking ham. But just so you know, the reason why I'm not all riled up is because it's, you know, part of the plan. And, and you guys need to remember that. A lot of people just get hyped every session, the salts, they're going mad, and they think that's how you get strong. And it is, but you've got to pick and choose the times to do that. So don't be a fucking fan of getting ham all the time, or going ham all the time. Don't be ham. Extension. Sandbag's about 110, so sandbag's pretty heavy for a first one in. But um, yeah, we'll give it a crack. It's gonna be a lap and extension, so I've obviously got enough. Well, I could set some up to load it over, but it's more hassle than what it's worth sometimes. When you're training stuff like sandbag, you want to be able to get it out, get it done, put the fucking thing back, and crack on with your session. You know, if I was set up a yoke or, you know, it's just some bullshit. It takes too long, and I know I won't be consistent with it. So I'm just going to pick it up, extend it as high as I can, chuck it down. Uh, don't know how many reps I'm going to do, because it depends how hard it is. I'll go to like RP8. So, based off how that felt, maybe five, we'll see. Three to five. And I'm probably going to accumulate roughly 20 reps in total, and just get used to it again. Uh, building up that uh, confidence to rip it off the floor, extend it real high, and yeah, I've got kind of weak, well, I don't, I don't anymore, but I used to have weak biceps from when I tore them. I've spent a long time strengthening them and rehabbing them, and they feel real good, they feel strong and safe, so, uh, and now I need to transfer that confidence over to the actual events, and uh, yeah, try and get back to where I was. Used to be really good at sandbag, so, We'll hopefully get back to it again. Three freeze. Two fat for fives.
sprint to the back, carry it there, pass it back. So I've finished with sandbags now. I did do a nice sprint lap and carry. Shannon's fucking shy to miss the camera. Uh, but I was happy with that. I think I went fast, I think I had good technique, but I will never know. Uh, we've got stiff legs next, so I'm going to do two sets of 10 at 170 kilo, slow eccentric tap and goes, and then I've got some bent over rows, um, and then some reverse hyper, and then I'm going to have a bit of a play on Kaiser functional trainer, get some hip flexor work done, uh, which is very hard to isolate your hip flexor, because to load your hip inflection, it's a bit of an awkward thing to set up. So I'm hoping that this functional trainer, I can do that, because I get really tight hip flexors, like I said in one of the first videos, and uh, weak muscle is a tight muscle, you little cunts, remember that? Weak muscle is a tight muscle. You take one thing away from this little shit video with your five viewers, it's a weak muscle, it's a tight muscle. So if you've got little short bullshit hip flexors, the sizes of an effigy cock, then you need to train them, get them strong, lengthen them, and they'll be sweet. I'm lazy, I've got a couple of sets of 10, then I'm gonna do some Kaiser shit. I feel better now after them, I don't feel as sick. I generally thought I was gonna spew again, but I survived. In, in shape, pure fucking athlete. So I'm trying to use that Kaiser machine for some pull downs. Found a bit of an issue with the thing. It doesn't seem to want to give us the resistance that we want. Um, it says it goes to 45 kilos, but we're pumping up to like 25, so about halfway, and then it's just stuck, won't go any heavier. So we can't really use it for what I was hoping to there. But I'm gonna use, uh, do some core on it, uh, some rotational core and some hip flexor work, and hopefully that works a little better. Um, I guess it maybe isn't, well it's, it should work, I don't know why it's not, I'm going to message Paul, I don't know why it's not going heavy enough, we'll see. I feel like on the pull downs, I can accelerate into it, load 
loads of resistance through the whole curve, no, no momentum build up. I really feel my core feels good. Uh, shame it didn't work on a pull downs, but yeah. Disappointed in the resistance, to be honest. But the concept is really good. Really, really good actually. Two meters off the uh, broad jump. 